The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon and welcome to the SIGUX webinar. Um, welcome to May for us. It's the end of a semester and um, getting ready for commencement this weekend. My name is Lori Fox. I'm the current chair of the executive committee of SIGUX. And today I have Paul Belvin, who is our panelist. I'll be turning things over to him shortly. Um, thank you everyone for joining us today. Right now I wanted to give you some reminders about the webinar. First of all, everyone is muted um, by default. The session is being recorded. It will be available next week on our YouTube channel. You can ask a question in the questions window and I'll be moderating that. Or you also can raise your hand um, when it comes time to the question area and um, if you would like I can unmute you. Um, is my PowerPoint paused here? Why is it show paused? Paul, can you see my webinar reminders on the screen? Um, no, I do not. Hmm. How about now? There they there are. There it is. I must have hit the pause button. Okay, so if everyone could either say hello to me in the question panel or raise your hand just so I'm sure that um, people are hearing me. Hello, Bill. Thank you for following directions and all the little people waving at me. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, the registration is opening for the SIGUX annual conference that will be held this November in New Orleans. Um, Paul and I, while we were um, getting ready to start the webinar, we're just having a chat about some of the locations that we have enjoyed of the recent SIGUX conferences. And I think it's safe to say that um, we are all looking forward to go into New Orleans. Um, the location looks fantastic. Hotel information is available on the website if you want to get a jump on that. And registration is scheduled to open at the end of May, first part of June. Um, we're uh, using a new event registration service this year. So we are um, in testing phase now and hope to open it up soon. There is a lot of information on the conference website. I know there's information about the plenary speakers. Three of the four pre-conference seminars have been announced. So be sure to keep an eye on that conference webpage for updated information. We um, were actually working on our fifth uh, book club book. This month we are reading The Phoenix Project by Jean Kim, which I don't know if, if you've read it before, you know that um, it is a little bit different from the other um, professional development type books we've read. This book is a story um, of a company and some um, IT nightmares that they're going through. And it's, it's been a really interesting book to read um, because you can see a lot of parallels to, I'm sure, your day-to-day -day work. Um, the discussion for the Phoenix Project will begin in Slack on Tuesday, May 28th. There will also be a go-to meeting um, hangout scheduled that week. The um, Slack discussion is really open to anyone. So if you're in Slack and interested in hearing more about the book, pop in and see what we talk about. In June, our book is QBQ, The Question Behind the Question. Um, I believe that book is about accountability. And um, I put a link to our book club webs, uh, webpage up there. So if you want to see what books we're reading, we have our books picked through the summer. Um, I'm pretty excited. The book that we're going to read in August actually was written by our one of our plenary speakers for the conference. So that's going to be a great tie-in, and it really helps with that plan of, I'm going to see, to this conference, I want to read the speaker's book before I go. So maybe you would consider joining us in August. It's also time to nominate yourself and your colleagues for SIGUX awards. 
all three um, of these award opportunities are available. The Penny Crane Award for Distinguished Service, our Hall of Fame Awards, and the Self-Nominated Communication Awards. And you can find out more information about each of those, including the deadlines and the qualifications on our website. Our upcoming webinars, we have June, July, and October um, locked into place. In June, we're going to talk about cats and customer service. I could not go to that presentation at the conference last year because it was scheduled against mine, so I'm very excited to see that one. In July, we'll talk about developing a culture of care, and then in October, our SIGUX 2019 conference planners will put together a webinar for newcomers, and really anyone is welcome to join that as well. Want to remind you about membership benefits. It's a good time to check and see if your membership is up to date before registration so you can get that conference discount and the pre-conference seminar discount. It also gives you access to our digital library. Those are all of our papers and publications. And um, the SIGX mentoring program will be starting another cohort this fall. There are several ways to stay connected with the SIGX community. You can join our email listserv, our Facebook community, follow us on Twitter. Um, and we also have a pretty decent Slack community. Our most popular channels right now are Book Club, because of course we've been driving a lot of conversation there. Conference, that's a great place to ask questions either about the conference or paper writing or really anything related to the conference productivity, and then um, a weekly challenge, which is um, a weekly challenge question put out by Mo Nishiyama. And they relate to how you handle professional challenges at work. And that's been really neat to see how people answer his questions. It's a, it's a um, very entertaining channel. So that's it for me, and uh, Paul, if you are ready, I'm going to change the presenter to be you. Okay. And you should have the controls now. All right. Let's see here. You see and I see your screen. Yeah. So, Paul, I'm going to mute myself, um, and I'll pop in if I see a question. And, I mean, obviously I'm right here if you need anything, too. Okay. Great. Thank you, Lori. And thank you to everyone else for taking time out of your day to uh, attend this. I will be speaking on how I have used Office 365 um, in training um my student workers and this is kind of a, a process just to uh, go over like how it began and, and how it has turned out so uh, I'll go ahead and get started and just talk a little bit about my university and we are Southeast Missouri State University we are a public regional university founded in 1873 and you can see the numbers there of our uh, colleges and schools and we have about 10,000 undergrads and a thousand grads and about 400 faculty and 761 full-time staff. Um, we are located in Southeast Missouri, so where the red dot is for Kit Grotto, but to give you a, show you in relation to the other states that surround us, we are in the heartland of the Midwest. Um, when people think of Missouri, you know, everybody's probably heard of Branson or St. Louis or Columbia, where Mizzou's at, but we are down here, um, is where we are located. And so primarily serving the, what they call the Boot Hill region of uh, Southeast Missouri. And so at the, at the time that I created this slide for uh, the SIGUX presentation, back in October, we had four campuses. Um, we're down to three now. So we have the, uh, Two locations in Cape Grotto. We have um, this is just a picture of the river showing 
we're just close to the river. But this is our flagship campus. And this is our academic building, our academic hall. We also have the river campus that is uh, devoted to arts and theater um, that is literally on the river. Um, but then the, the regions down south, those are our regional campuses, they're more rural. Um, and so, but the Malden campus actually closed down, so we're not offering classes there anymore. So we're just looking at the one in Kennett and Saxton. Um, and so there's a picture of students out in the soybean field around a heavy irrigation. Um, as far as the uh, structure of our IT department, we are centralized. Um, and as far as the uh, uh, layout, we have the operations and system support, uh, telecom application systems, and then user services is where I'm at. And primarily that's where the student workers are housed at. Um, I have, um, we, you know, we have close to 60 that's working amongst all the locations, but primarily they are working in the computer labs for me. Um, it's kind of hard to see here, but as far as the, the little orange flags there, this is our main campus. And so um, we've got basically uh, six computer labs on the main campus, and then I've got one at the other campuses that I showed you. So we're kind of spread out um, as far as lab, um, structure is um, so we just where our students need to be that's where we are at and so as far as trainings and keeping track of the different tasks and projects that we assign our students um, it has evolved and so I've got a screenshot here of an old Excel uh, workbook that we used and uh, to initially keep track of projects and stuff and it was just it really got unwieldy and cumbersome and the students hated it and it was just hard to to keep track of everything so we kind of graduated to uh, we found some software that we really liked and it was called swift to do um, and that worked great until they went to a cloud-based description and so um, it doesn't really work well with our uh, accounting structure um, or at least it didn't at that time and so uh, we use web help desk for our um, help desk software and so started using that and I really liked it it was very logical but the, the students did not um, care for it too often and so about that time we were in, I was put in charge of of uh, tracking the students progress and and um, making sure that they were on task um, and so and so it kind of coincided with whenever we initially um, started using Office 365, and that was in the spring of 2017. And so we started using uh, OneDrive and Planner and People and Calendar at first. And um, I X'd out Teams and Power BI just because they're available now. But when we first started, um, those two items were not available. Um, and so started using Planner for keeping track of the initial projects that our project support students were working on and so as far as like communications and working on newsletters and what articles they were writing um, web page updates or creating new web pages and so we really liked it um, as far as a management uh, standpoint and the students seemed to be on board too and so we kind of showed them what we were thinking and expecting on how to use this and they uh, they went to it pretty quickly um, and so by the end of the week they were actually entering their own projects uh, in the planner without any uh, direction from us and so that was very promising and so so this worked great for them and then I started thinking about my student workers who work in the labs and so uh, I created a, a group uh, for lab techs and uh, was thinking how I could use this to help with the actual training of, uh, of my students because traditionally our trainings are like two days. Um, the Thursday before the semester starts all my new hires are, are brought in and we spend the entire day, day together nine to five and we are going over um, 
what you see here are the contents of what we just affectionately call the red folder because we are so uh, creative. Um, and so the, the sheets are, are separate, they're individual, they're color coded to make it easier. But you know, I started doing this in 2006 and this is what I inherited. And, uh, you know, technology evolved. I got more labs, more responsibilities, more, you know, technology to go over in the trainings. And so I was not having enough time uh, in the day to actually do a worthy training for the students to uh, acclimate them to the department. Um, and so, um, you know, on top of that, then we would also cover, they would have to remember all these different URLs where to go to to do their jobs. Um, so we have a internal website here for our time clock. Um, so they would have to remember that, um, how to get to our shared drive. Um, whenever they're closing a the lab to see the uh, shutdown utility to be able to power off the computers at the end of the day. Um, some of the labs we have uh, our students uh, check in with their IDs and so that was a different website that my students had to remember to go to. Plus uh, our scheduling software which we use uh, a third party when to uh, for that. Um, and so there's a lot of information and all the information during those um, trainings, um, you know, it's just thrown at them in that one day, and it's a lot of information. And we all know that, you know, you, you hope you you hope all of it sticks, but you're lucky if just some of it sticks um, in their memory. So um, they weren't retaining a lot of the information that we were going over. Um, so started uh, using, first off, the um, after the planner going so uh, nicely, I created an internal website uh, through SharePoint. And what was nice about this is I can use it as a splash page here, um, but then also all the information that I had in the red folders, I was able to put here and still go over the information, but it was more organized. It was easier to go over and get to and discuss the actual day of the training. Um, so that resulted in saving initially um, money to make the copies um, and having students um, you know, go through the files to make sure they were current and then go into our copy center on campus to have the color copies made and then having our students um, that were working for me over the summer, um, you know, to uh, put the colored sheets in the red folder. And so they were able to save like two costs there as far as that labor aspect of it and the training aspect of it. Because during our trainings, we do pay our, the students uh, while they're in the training session. And so having everything here and it's a, a structure as a, each folder is like a different category. So you just go into the, the folder and the one here is like within operations and printing and we just go over the uh, information about um, particular information about the printers that we're using at the time. Paul, we have a quick question from yeah. a participant. Do your student staff assist students or do they also assist faculty and staff? All three, but primarily students okay. um, are IT computer labs are open or what other universities consider general. So anybody is welcome to use it as long as they have the, our, you know, their Southeast key. Um, so, but primarily students, but faculty and staff will be using it as well. And in, in that case, it's pretty much going to be maybe our large lab in our uh, library is where that would happen at, not necessarily the, uh, two labs that we have in different residence halls. So, mm -hmm. But yes, primarily students. Primarily students. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. So then to kind of piggyback on uh, SharePoint, um, it's like a year, no, like six months later, so over the summer, um, 
the IT department released teams to the university. And so, again, I just kind of thought about how we could use teams because during the trainings um, across campus, I was showing it to different departments, um, thinking there had to be a better way um, to do this. And um, so even though I did like SharePoint, and uh, I'll go back to that real quick too. Um, as far as, um, so going over so, so much information in that one day, but some of it was they were retaining and, and a lot of it they weren't. Um, and then that red folder, you know, it was, I knew it was unrealistic for them to keep that red folder with them at all times. And, and uh, I didn't expect that. Um, so whenever a question would arise, you know, like we, for the printer instance, you know, how to change out the toner or the imaging unit in that particular uh, printer, how's it done? And so they wouldn't remember because they may have to do it, you know, three or four months later after the training. And, uh, and so that they would call um, for assistance. And then uh, by using this, this cut down on the calls uh, to myself and to the help desk because they had the information handy. Um, so they were able to go here, find that file, and just follow the procedures on how to do that. Um, and so it gave them a sense of ownership, um, and then that made them feel good about themselves because they were able to solve the issue um, without, you know, contacting uh, someone else to do it. Um, and we all know that, you know, some of them, some students may be more um, uh, uncomfortable, you know, reaching out for help. And so uh, there was no, um, there was less impact to the students using the lab if the printer was down, they were able to get it back up and running quicker uh, this way. Um, so going back to Teams, and so everything that art at, I had already built in SharePoint, I kind of just included here. And then after this short PowerPoint, I'll go into Teams and show you what it's like, but this is just a screenshot of the general channel um, within the teams that we use. Um, and so the conversation part of it is is great because that really cuts down on the number of emails going back and forth. And so instead of, you know, sending, replying an answer to one student by email um, and then getting the same question from a different student, um, this way by having it out there in conversations, it's actually kind of creating a knowledge base and you're having that information there uh, for other students to see. Um, and then it's kind of nice, kind of like social media, whenever you see somebody, you know someone has seen it, if they give it like a thumbs up or whatever um, inside Teams. And so you're, you're seeing in real time that other people are viewing uh, what's out there. Um, the staff um, or the training files is the part that was, uh, that I'd already had in SharePoint. So the files section and the training files is kind of the same, but since I'd already had the training files in SharePoint, I just created that uh, separately. And then what I showed you previously on uh, two or three slides earlier, as far as having to remember the different URLs uh, to the different locations that they need to go to, uh, we have it all right here within Teams now. So whenever they arrive to their shift, um, they sign into computer, go to Teams, and then they just go to that internal website um, to clock in and clock out now. So they don't have to remember uh, another URL. Same thing as their, their schedule. Um, and then um, you also see that um, our August meeting that we had um, just through a couple surveys out there. So, because over the summer we were curious and we just had questions and like, well, I'll just ask my students whenever we get back. Um, and so in order for me not to forget, I just went ahead and created that survey and just told them to uh, ask them to go out and complete that survey, uh, which provided us with uh, some great information that we really weren't uh, expecting. Um, the answer they gave us or the responses they kind of led us in a different direction so um, so this is just the conversation part so let me switch over to teams um, is team showing now Yes, it is. All right, great. Thank you. Um, 
So as you can see, you have several teams. Um, the lab techs one that's expanded. This is the one that I'm talking about um, today. But uh, I have several other ones too. Some of them is just a team of one, just helps me out. Because another thing that I really like about teams that makes my job easier, not only makes the student jobs easier, but makes my job easier is having the um, Teams app on my phone. And so actually whenever I'm out and about, um, I'm just able to pull up, you know, pull my phone out, open up the app and enter information within the app and it, you know, shows up here. So I don't have to remember or send myself an email to do something where whenever I'm able to just do it right then and there. Um, but for the students, um, so you'll see in the conversations, um, so instead of like sending, this just cuts down on email. This is what I really like. Um, some of the ones that you can see here, just letting people know I'll be out of the office or just giving a shout out to one of our students who had a poster presentation for a department. Um, and so if you go back further, you'll be able to see um, just the fellow students helping out one another, which um, I think is really nice where they really didn't have that sense of of uh, camaraderie uh, before. Um, and then files, this is just ones I've put out uh, lately, but it's just nice to have everything there. Uh, and again, this is the training files that I had had um, from SharePoint that I just pulled over um, directly from there uh, in our internal website for the time clock. So um, it's just come to be a very, very handy tool. And so the migration was just, it just kind of fell into place as, as more and more rolled out. Um, you know, the students, the feedback from the students ha has been spectacular. Um, the, of course we did have, uh, the, you know, no system's really perfect. And uh, what we have ran into here uh, using Teams, um, but I'll go back and just the initial feedback was overall positive. Of course, we had, you know, I had some students who I'd hired as, you know, freshmen, sophomore, and they'd been with me for three, four years. And uh, and so I, you know, their, their last semester uh, working for me, you know, I wrote this out and so they, they weren't crazy about it just because it was different, uh, which is understandable. But um, it wasn't that big of an issue just because um, they were upperclassmen. Um, and what I have found um, with my students is uh, not all, but uh, the majority of the upperclassmen, you know, they may be willing to work their 20 hours, their, you know, the first couple of years, but they get busier. You know, their projects get harder, their classes get harder. Um, they're more involved on campus and so they'll cut back on their hours and so um, it really wasn't that big of a deal just because they weren't in the lab that much now what did kind of hurt from that was just they had the most wealth of knowledge um, from all my student workers um, but it it quickly evened out um, so that wasn't a, um, wasn't that big of a of an issue um, and whenever we first wrote this out, we found out that whatever version of Google we were, or Google uh, Chrome that we were using, um, it needed to be updated. Um, Teams, uh, the web-based version of Teams wouldn't open for some reason inside that version. So they either had to use a different browser until we upgraded um, upgraded Chrome. Um, and so that's our, the initial uh, issues. And even even now, I mean, every once in a while, um, there's a hiccup where a student can't log in to Teams, um, but overall, you know, everybody can, and it's make their it makes their life easier. Um, so, and so, um, so ma the materials did decrease, um, the training times decreased, and so. Um, my training times on that Thursday has still scheduled nine to five, but we may be able to get out of there nine to four, but it saved a little bit of, 
of training time on that Thursday, but I don't feel rushed as far as the, the training. I feel like I'm going over everything now. Um, and you wouldn't think it would be that big of a difference going over individual sheets of paper uh, with the information versus having electronic and being able to um, throw it up on the uh, projection screen, but it, it did make a difference because if you have 20 students in trainings and they're not all going to find that same sheet at the same time, so you, somebody may, able, may be able to find that sheet very quickly and then someone else, it just seems like it may take them two minutes to find it. Um, and so this way they're, they don't have to worry about, you know, trying to find a sheet of paper. It's, it's there for them um, and we go over it together and we you know, just, like I said, it doesn't seem like it would save that much of a time, but it it, it does, it did save time in, in payroll. Whenever you have a large number of people you're training, you're paying them an hourly uh, rate, you know, it adds up. Um, and I haven't mentioned the Friday trainings either, um, but we do the, the trainings on Friday as well, and that's all my lab assistants. So you're looking anywhere between 45 and 60. Um, that would be going through that um, training. So it used to be nine to five as well, um, but the past two times of using Teams, I've been able to whittle that time down, um, and we're doing it from like 10 to three now. Um, and so we shaved off like three hours of training uh, from that as well. And the students, the the, uh, the quality of the training hasn't uh, suffered at all. If, if anything, it's gotten better. Um, and the students are happier uh, that they're being kept there um, for a lesser amount of time um, and then still getting um, the information that they need to do their jobs correctly. Paul, I have a couple of questions that have come in. Okay. Um, Phil says that they use Team as well for communication. He wonders if you use OneNote. He uses it inside of Teams for meeting notes, agendas, one-on-one -on -one employee talks. Um, I do and I don't. Um, I haven't really seen the need yet in this team um, for using uh, the notebook. Um, however, in um, this one here, the IT lab operations that I have, um, I do use um, the notebook. And this is just facilities, uh, you know, keeping track of inventory and um, hardware, software issues, payroll records, um, personnel, uh, um, not necessarily issues, but just personnel records as well. Mm -hmm. I use the notebook for that, but that's more for me to have a more organized system and having everything right there. Um, so. Okay. Hey, Bill also wonders, um, do you do your scheduling with Office 365? I do not. I use windowwork.com. Um, we've been using this probably since 2012. Um, we went from doing it manually um, to this, and I, I'm not getting paid by window work. Um, but I've been very happy. In fact, we're, it's up for renewal now, and so we're, we're renewing it. Um, I know that Teams has, um, I think it was called, I can't remember what it was called before, but it was, I think it's just called Staff now. Um, let's see. No, it's called Shifts now. Um, I've kind of looked at that. Um, before it changed the name, I looked at it recently. Um, I like shifts um, as far as. Bill thinks it was Staff Hub. Staff Hub. Um, that, that's what I was going to say, but I was like, yeah. no. <laughs> then I have to start thinking about Ticket Hub or something. But yeah. um, but uh, I, I, think, I think that would be perfect for a smaller office or if you even have a large workforce in one location. I think that would work great, um, but having, you know, 60 students and having to schedule across um, at, at the most, you know, across 10 locations, um, it, it it just, I didn't think it would work for us. So, no, I don't use the scheduling within Teams, mm -hmm. but not to say that it, it, it could work for others. 
We used when to work too. We like it. Oh, more questions are coming in. Um, do students track their own training? What happens if they cannot attend the formal training? Do you keep records of past students for referral purposes, like if a future employer comes? Yes. Um, for especially this time of year, um, you know, we're getting contacted by employers and so we have all that information. Um, right now, I've got most of it's on paper copies. I'm in the process of digitizing that um, and incorporating it in Teams now. Um, but that's another handy thing for when to work too, um, which I know isn't really related to Office 365, but uh, going into when to work, you can actually look very quickly and see when their hire date and end date was and all that. Um, as far as the um, attending the trainings, we do tell our students that the trainings are mandatory. And so if they are going to be working for us that semester, that they are required to attend uh, the mandatory meetings. Now, I've been a little bit more lenient um, in the past than initially, um, but it's always been if it's been, you know, if they were doing something academic you know, related as far as if they were studying abroad and they couldn't make it to a meeting, um, that was always excused if it was a school function. Um, with having when to work, work not sorry, not when to work, but using Teams, um, having everything there, then it's, it's been a little bit more lenient. Just this, you know, last two times, um, I had two student workers who both their moms was having uh, surgery and they needed to be with their family instead of uh, at a training, and they they were i say were because they both graduated uh last week but uh very good strong uh, students and so uh, i wasn't concerned and i would just touch base with them once they got back thank you oh wait mm -hmm. i got another question oh my goodness do you have any ongoing training during the semester N not for my well I have, but I did not this semester. Um, there are times where we do uh, trainings uh, mid-semester if there's like a new product um, uh, or new new software, new hardware that they need to be familiar with. We'll do that. Primarily, um, my trainings mid-semester though um, are with faculty and staff and other student groups um, where I'll go out and uh, you know. I think seeing the listeners, I think this may be true for, for everyone, but whenever we also held like monthly trainings on different topics and those rates were, the turnout was low, even though people were signing up, not mm -hmm. very many people showed up. Um, so what I found successful was, was actually just meeting with deans and uh, chairs um, and then going out and just doing presentations and trainings during their departmental meetings. Okay. Well, I think and, I'm going to interrupt you for those, a little bit. <laughs> and, and most of those meetings that I've done probably this past academic year um, to, to those um, um, groups of people are actually teams based. And so uh, I've, uh, I've, I've uh, got other people as excited about teams as, as I am. So uh, that's been fun. Um, so, uh, yeah, going back to the uh, as far as the results and the cost, um, so yeah, just budgets were, our bottom line was better. Um, and then also having so many locations and, and what we had before, you know, not only did they have the red folders, but then we also had all these different files on, on how to, you know, work the printers and how to do particular stuff in different labs. We just had that in, in what we call the black binder because, again, we're just so creative. Um, and it was a three ring binder. Um, and so when, Whenever anything needed to be updated, you physically have to go out and and uh, put it in the binder. But now it's just easier to update. You just go out and uh, make the changes and swap out the electronic copy, and you're good to go. And so it's a lot easier uh, to do that. And then uh, again, the, the student collaboration has been very pleasing to watch. Um, students helping students on on doing this. Um, you know, have access to the programs that allow them. And, and we encourage them to work together. So that's been really nice to see. Um, and, you know, it's very 
you know, I'm always available because uh, I have labs that are open overnight. So I feel like I'm on call 24 seven. So I've always been available to my students, um, but I'm not going to lie. That's been nice to receive uh, less calls at night uh, whenever, whenever there's any issues. And so they can contact a, another coworker who's working another night shift in a different lab. Um, or uh, if it's, you know, if it's something that isn't, um, you know, if it's something they can wait in the morning, they can just go ahead and put it out there in the conversation uh, within Teams, and I'll see it whenever I come in in the morning. And, but sometimes um, before I see it at 8 o'clock, you know, another student has responded, you know, at 6.30 in the morning uh, answering the question. So yeah. that's been helpful. Um, Paul, can you, Deb wonders how student training is tracked now versus when you used the spreadsheets. Can you show us that? Uh, I don't have any analytics or anything, any data like that. Um, it's all been kind of like, or is that what the question is? She says, how is student training tracked now versus when you used Excel spreadsheets? Um, I guess I'm not sure exactly what she means. Deb, can you clarify a little bit? I mean, we really don't track it, but what we, I guess it's more subjective. We, we don't. You know, the quality of their work um, is, is, I feel, better than what it was before. Um, and so, um, but yeah, we really don't have any hard data. It's just that, you know, they're doing their job. They're doing it better. They're being more helpful um, with their coworkers and the patrons that are, who's using our lab. Um, and so we, not that we... I mean, rarely did we get any complaints from our patrons using labs, but it's even been, I don't think I've received one single complaint since we've been using uh, Teams. Um, uh, okay, so Deb said perhaps she misunderstood. At the beginning, she thought you displayed an Excel spreadsheet and that you were tracking the employees and what training they had. She's attempting to do something similar. Oh, okay. Now, that spreadsheet was not um, tracking the uh, their trainings. Um, what that was showing was just what we were using before uh, we started using Planner and it's signing um tasks and duties um for the students to do so um instead of using planner which was the first part of office 365 that we started using before that those same um jobs or, or duties um was being tracked just in excel spreadsheet is all that was And so with Planner, you know, if they do, you know, if they needed to update a web page, um, you know, if they were, you know, it's not started or in progress or finished. Um, but pretty much that spreadsheet was the precursor of that uh, for us. You know, if, if they were needing to update a web page, um, they would have to fill in a, a cell with information on what their progress was um, and before they left the end of the day or something like that. Do we have any other questions for Paul? Pretty quiet group. All right, Paul, was there anything else you wanted to share with us? No, I was winding down. I think I covered everything that I had covered previously. Well, um, thank you. I. I <laughs> Thank you again for having me. Yeah, I really enjoyed seeing your trans um, transition from the red folder. <laughs> yeah. To something that's available at the students' fingertips. That's that's fantastic. Okay, yeah, uh, so um, 
we recorded this presentation and it will be shared on our YouTube channel next week. Um, we post it on Mondays um, and you can, um, you can watch it again or, or share it with your colleagues. Um, Bill, I agree with Bill. He said very helpful presentation. Um, thank you again so much, Paul. And I hope everybody has a great afternoon. I'm going to end the webinar now. All right. Thank you very much. All right. Goodbye. Bye.